Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Well, we had a really early start this morning. We were up for um, half past three and then we've drove straight down um, and already had two encounters with otters. The video I want to put together for you today is a how to photograph otters on mull. Um, I think lots of people come here for the first time. They expect to find otters straight away. Um, you know, it is synonymous with um, otters. I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm being eaten alive by midges. That's one of the downsides of being here. Um, it is absolutely the place to come if you want to photograph otters. Um, but it's not as straightforward as just turning up and taking the pictures. So I want to put together this video really to give you some tips and some, some uh, little hints on how to get the best out of your otter photography whilst you're on mull. So come along for the journey and see what I see. Oh, okay, so I've had a quick break and I've been and got my smidge. I would say this is probably one of the best things that you can get whilst you're on mull. Um, the midges are just relentless and they are particularly active first thing in the morning and for last thing at night. And that, unfortunately, is the best time to photograph otters. So you have to put up with it. Um, I've got mozzie nets, which, which I do put on whilst, whilst I'm uh, photographing. Um, and I've got some, some other different things that I use for, for the midges. But smidge is one of the best things that we found for keeping the midges at bay. So the per first tip that I'm going to give you, pair of binoculars, absolutely worth the weight in gold. Um, you need to find yourself a, a good vantage point where you can see all the way up and down the lock and then just stop, get your binoculars out and just look along the water. When it's still like it is today, there's no ripple at all. What you're looking for is a V-shape in the water and that's as the otter's moving along, they create a little V-shape and it's the first thing that you should be looking for. So a good set of binoculars, a little bit of patience, and just really take in your surroundings and see what you can see. So the next thing I want to talk about really is camouflage. And I think it's one of those things that you'll see people photographing otters. Some people wear all black, some people would just wear drab clothing, and then other people, they go all out and they wear the camouflage. So I want to just talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of the different types of camouflage. So the first one that you can see, I'm wearing a camouflage jacket, um, just a, a, a lightweight camouflage jacket. And that's really, really good for, for I think, for, for moving around on the bank and, and staying still. I'd say the key pieces of, of camouflage that you need are these things, gloves. Um, your hands are such reflectors of light and you can see the difference there. There's such reflectors of light and, so, and your hands are all over your camera. Uh, so I think if you don't put gloves on, I think that's one of the, the key things in which you can be spotted by otters um, from the water. So cover up your hands, get yourself some gloves. These are really thin uh, and I like really, really thin gloves like these because it allows me to still feel all the controls of my camera and I need to be able to use my camera whilst I'm wearing my gloves. So thin gloves are absolutely essential. Okay, so this is my second stage of camouflage. Um, this is a 3D camo suit. I've got trousers for it as well, but I don't often think that the trousers bring you any advantage whatsoever when you lay down you, you, your legs aren't really on show particularly when you're facing facing the animal but the the 3d camo definitely works and what's great about these is they've got a hood that you can pull up and then i always have a little neck scarf on you can pull your neck scarf up and then you don't need your mozzie nets then because this actually has some strings that we can pull tight if i can find them which we can pull tight and we can double up as the mozzie net so we can still see through this because it's mesh, but I can't be bitten by the mosquitoes. And it's really, really good camouflage. To be able to uh, be quite close to otters, you need to have a good, a good level of camouflage. So there you go, that's my 3D camo jacket. Thank you. 
Another really, really good method for spotting otters is using the car. And so what we'll often do, and, and it's the reason why it's mull's so good for this, is that often there, there are roads that follow the, the, uh, the bank of the, of the locks. And so all we do, I've, I've, I've called it the otter crawl before now um, on, on previous videos. And what we do is we get in the car and we just very, very slowly, no more than 10 mile an hour, we, we crawl along the edge of, of, the, of the locks and we're just, it, by doing this, it gives you the opportunity to cover much more ground than you would be doing on foot. But the other key thing is, um, the otters aren't as phased as cars as they are of people. So you can be driving along um, and there can be an otter in, in the water at the side of you. You can even wind your window down and if, you, you know, if you're not somebody that's good on your feet, you can photograph from the window um, and the otter probably still won't have any issue with you being there. It's when you get out of the car, that's why you have to be very, very cautious with the otters. But it's a really, really good method. It covers lots and lots of ground. We'll cover the whole of this lock um, via the car, just, just gently moving up and down, looking, looking for the otters, looking for signs. So if you don't want to stay in one spot and use your binoculars, this is a really, really good method. So most of the roads on Mull are single track lanes um, with passing places. And what you've got to bear in mind is that the passing places are just that, they're passing places, they're not parking spots. And the locals will rightly get quite frustrated with you if you park in the passing places. So just be mindful of that and look for opportunities for, for safe parking that doesn't obstruct the road that's not in passing places. This is one of my favourite shots of the trip. A nice clean photograph of an otter with a fairly unobstructed background and most of the otter in view. It's not perfect, the boulder in the foreground is a little intrusive and the black seaweed in the background is a little distracting, but I can live with that. I'm going to explain to you how combining all the tips I have given you so far with my cat and mouse method put me in a position where I was capable of getting the shot without the otter having any idea I was there. And that is always my primary aim. You can see here, I've spotted the otter. I know where the otter is in the water. And my aim at this point is to just watch, observe, and get a feel for how the otter is behaving. You'll notice that the camera isn't even in my hand at this point. As the otter dives, it's time to move. I grab my camera and I know I've got 15 seconds before the otter is likely to surface. I've already looked down the bank, I know where I'm running to, and within 15 seconds I've got to get myself settled, in, ready in position and awaiting the otter. The aim is to get ahead of it and let it come to you. I'm in position. The otter's not arrived yet, so I've got time to get myself settled. It's still making its way down the bank towards my location. Quick check of the camera settings, making sure everything's right. Get yourself in position and then wait for the otter to arrive. If you watch the dive of this otter, you'll notice that it's quite a shallow dive and the tail doesn't flick up in the air. Otters do this when they're making ground, when they're covering distance and they're not hunting. And because I know that it's done this, I decide it's time to move again. 
15 seconds, that's all I've got. Run as fast as I can, get to the next point of cover, get in position and lie in wait. Now the 500 f4 lens is quite a beast and it's quite wieldly to handhold. I can do that for taking uh, stills. Taking stills handholds not a problem but for video it's really quite difficult. So wherever possible I'll always utilize the, the surrounding and the uh, obstacles that I've got as a makeshift tripod. You can see that here where I'm resting the camera on top of the boulder. Well, an absolute disaster. I've lost it. I don't know how I've lost it, but I've lost it. Uh, I run on ahead and I don't know whether it's got out behind me, but I can't find it anywhere. What a disaster. I've been following that one now for over an hour. That's wildlife photography for you folks. Ah, oh, so frustrating. Feeling a little dejected, I went walk back to the car. Within five minutes, I noticed something out on the water. I grabbed my binoculars, had a good look, and there it was, the otter. I'd found him once again, actively hunting and moving along the shoreline in the direction that I had been following him all morning. He must have just gone past me without me noticing. the time I'm looking further down the bank for my next piece of cover. But at the moment he's actively hunting in this spot so I'll stay where I am. You can see here sometimes I use my knee as a tripod and I'm leaning the lens on the end of my knee. Um, this is quite a good mobile strategy and gives me the best opportunity for video. Let's give you an idea of time. I've been tracking this otter now since quarter to five this morning and we're now 10 to seven. So best part of two hours. It's not a quick type of photography or to photography. Slowly, slow. Slowly, slowly, capture monkey.
there you have it otter photography the way to do it and the best way to get the best shots ever is not to run after the otter down the, down the bank and stand over the shot of it we've seen far too much of that this week hounding otters and uh, interfering with them and causing issues the best method and i'm hoping you've been able to see that in in the way that i've been doing it this morning once you've found your otter sit and watch it for a while work out the direction that it's traveling and then get ahead of it well ahead of it so you need to be a good 25 50 meters ahead of it and then allow it to come to you if you're lucky it'll it'll catch something that, that it can't handle in the water and then it'll come out onto the shore just in front of you that's happened twice this morning so the otter's been right out at, at one occasion right at my feet really um I was at a, a reasonable distance from it but it was right in front of me and it was fairly un, unobstructed view which is just what you want then when it enters back in the water resist the temptation to jump up and move forward you just sit wait watch what it does because sometimes if it finds a patch uh, of area that, it, that it's hunting on and it's finding it you know it's finding it's productive it'll stay hunting there and if you move off it might come out again with something else so just watch wait for it to see what it does and then once you've realized that it's moving off once it dives you've got i i say 15 seconds it's longer than that but 15 seconds is a good fail safe 15 seconds to move get yourself back down and then sit still sit still and let it and let it do its thing if it's moving it'll only be up for probably about five ten seconds then it'll dive again and you can move again and get into your next spot and the whole time looking up the bank thinking what's the next area of cover that i've got what can i look to to sit behind next and then once you've found that as the otter dives 15 seconds run down and get into your next spot i've just been chatting with a um a, what, another photographer and he was explaining about uh, some behavior that he observed yesterday with some otters and he was photographing a female otter that had caught a skate and she was eating the skate when a male otter arrived and when the male otter arrived she actually buried the skate underneath the seaweed and then had an encounter with the male otter he wasn't sure whether it was a, a breed a breeding encounter or just um, some interaction and then the male moved on and then the female went back to the skate and uncovered it from the seaweed uh, and carried on eating it and actually one of the things that otters will do when they're hunting they'll catch food and they will um, when they catch food if they don't like the taste of it what they will do is they will um, bury it and they'll bury it under the seaweed and then they'll continue to hunt and then if the rest of the hunt has been unsuccessful and they can't find any more food they'll go back and they'll eat the food that they didn't particularly like the taste of because it's better than nothing um, it just shows how ingenious uh, um, and how resourceful otters are you know they are opportunistic hunters they are they will hunt anything that they can get their hands on you know there's been uh, footage shown of, of people that people have got of otters catching rabbits um, I saw this morning the, the otters going for the great divers, so they'll, they'll take birds and obviously they're predominantly taking food from within the, in the lock, within the water, fish, crabs, octopus, anything that they can find really. Um, a truly remarkable mustelid.
Well, that was absolutely sensational. Three otters, I assume mother and two cubs. Initially it was just two cubs and then the mother came to join them. And they were playing and hunting and stealing fish and crabs off each other. Absolutely incredible. And as you can hear, probably 10, 15 metres away. No, a long, bit more than that, probably about 50 metres away. There are builders busily doing their job, working hard. And the otters were not phased in the slightest. Um, I like to leave otters as I find them. And by that I mean, I like to have come away from them. They've no idea that I've been there. And then I retreat from the area and they have no idea that they've been filmed, photographed. And I think that creates the perfect, perfect experience. So I said at the start of this video, I'll give you some top tips of how and where to photograph otters. I'm hoping that you've got the tips. I'm hoping that you've now picked up some of the field craft that I use every single day when I'm out photographing otters. And I think by doing it this way, you cause the least disruption, disruption to the subject. And for me, that is incredibly important. I'm currently on Loch Scridden. And for me, I think that is the best, the best loch on the Isle of Mull for photographing otters. I know lots of people will disagree and they'll come up with other, uh, other locks that are all around Mull. But for me, this lock, this lock just, just has it all. It always produces and the scenery is just spectacular. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, I think it's about time you probably did. Um, in two days time, I'm going to be photographing ospreys on Loch Lomond, a brand new, a brand new hide that they've just set up only in 2022. Um, so I'm going to go and give that a try on the way home. Uh, so please tune in for that one. And until next time, ta-ra.